Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an absolute honor and a privilege to stand uh, and support a bill that is incredibly simple and straightforward, incredibly fair and open and transparent, and to cry a pox upon both your houses to the Liberals and the Conservatives for not supporting this. Uh, let's, let's take the Liberals to start, Mr. Speaker. Let's look at what they're really saying, first of all, about their own Premier. They're saying that a woman who works about 12 hours a day, I'm just estimating what she puts in, seven days a week, who has post-secondary education, who uh, had to fight for her job and has to get re-elected by the voters, is, worth, is not worth even half of what some of the public CEOs are worth, who happen to be, by the way, mainly male. So I would, first of all, call them out for the misogyny implicit in their comments. So, uh, um, that's what they're saying about their own premier. Their own premier, that's what they're saying. The Conservatives are saying, yes, let's regulate the public sector salaries of all of those little people. You know, the teachers and the nurses and the midwives and all of those people. But no, 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 no. But the people who are at the top of organizations like hospitals and universities, even if they have, Mr. Speaker, the same academic qualifications, the same years of experience, oh no, no, they're worth 10 times, 12 times what those little people are worth. Let's look at what those salaries really mean. And we're talking pre-Christmas here. We're talking pre-Christmas when women who are heading single families, many of them are working for minimum wage and trying to buy presents for their children. Let's go to the door, Mr. Speaker, with this message. Knock on that door and tell them, you know what? I don't care that you may have a master's and can't get a job. I don't care if you've got a BA or a PhD, even if you're a TA or but you are not worth, you are not worth what the CEOs of those companies, mainly male again, are worth, even with the same academic qualifications, even with the same years of experience, but who may have connections with high places. That's what we're really saying. Do we want to carry that message to the door? I, I dare you, carry that message to the door of your constituents. That's what I dare you to do. And to the Tories, I dare you to talk about fiscal restraint and not look at the top CEO's salaries. I dare you to take that message to your constituents and talking about fiscal responsibility. I mean, it's shameful. It's absolutely shameful. Let's talk about OPA and OPG and what those salaries really mean. Take-home pay now. Anybody who's listening to this, I don't know what your take-home pay looks like, but here's what you'd be looking at if you were one of those CEOs. You'd be looking at probably about 60000 in your pocket every month. Whoa. For most people, that's the lottery, Mr. Speaker. That's winning the lottery. A million dollars a year, that's the lottery. We buy 649 tickets. We don't even win that. Come on. That's the lottery. How much money do you need? How good are you? Really what you're saying is, what is the worth of human labor here? And that's what you're saying. You're saying that woman who's working as a nurse, her labor's not worth even a tenth of what the CEO of the hospital is worth. You, that's what you're really saying. You want to take that message to the door? I dare you. Take that message to the door. We will. I dare you to. I dare the Tories to take that message to the door in the next election. You knock on the door with your message of fiscal restraint, and you say, but yet for you, but not for your boss. Take it to the door. Thank you.